I modeled this low poly character in just one hour, and today I'll show you my simplest method on how I achieved it. Firstly, I sketched out a reference to create the model on top of. This is an original character of mine, and the sketch is quite rough and loose, and it's only going to be used as a reference, so I'm not too concerned about making it super polished. This is what the final sketch looks like before importing into Blender. I imported the picture into Blender and started creating the shapes. I used a cylinder to create the body and neck of my character. For this character, I chose to model the parts separately. This way I had different objects for the body, arms, legs, etc. I chose to do it this way because it's going to be easier to unwrap, texture, rig, and animate later on, in my opinion. I also wasn't paying too much attention to the poly count in this model. It is a low poly model, yes, but my main focus was on the aesthetic rather than the poly count. Next I added a cylinder again for the sleeves and the arms. You'll notice that I'm not following the shapes exactly as the reference, and that's fine. I'm making design decisions while modeling, and it's okay to deviate from your references slightly if you think it'll fit your vision better. I created the sleeve and the lower arm from the same object. I think it keeps things simple and easy. I also decided not to model the individual fingers and instead clump them together. For the elbow deformation, I selected these two edges in the front of the elbow and beveled it with one segment as you can see here. I did the same thing for the back of the elbow, but with two segments instead of one so that there is an extra edge in the middle. I don't mind the triangles in this model and I'm going to merge these vertices in the middle like this. This will help with better deformations of the elbow later on while still keeping the poly counts low. Next up are the legs. The process is exactly the same as the arms. I'm going to model her legs because I want her kimono to be flowy and drag behind when she's running or jumping, so you'll be able to see her legs. I added a mirror modifier to the legs and connected them in the middle just like this. Then I selected the entire top edge loop of the hips and extruded it upwards to create the rest of the hips. I added a few edge loops around the legs just to shape it a little better, and I created the knees just like how I did the elbows. I also extruded some geometry at the bottom of the legs to make her feet. If you're confused about how to create certain parts of your model, feel free to look up references or tutorials. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Once I'm done with the legs, I move on to create the lower part of her kimono. I created a circle object around her hips, and then I extruded it down to the middle of her shins. I also created some edge loops to better shape the kimono around her legs. After that, I selected these edges in the middle and split them to create the separation of the kimono, and shape them according to the reference. And I also added a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. For some reason, I always find myself creating the head after I'm done with the body. But either way, I started by adding a cube and applying two levels of subdivision surface modifier. Then I started to shape it to look like the head. It is a pretty simple process and not something that'll cause you to lose sleep at night. I know only a mother can love this face right here, but I am her mother and I love her very much. I'll probably recreate her face at a later date, but for now, I'm quite happy with this. I quickly moved on to creating the hair. I was quite uncertain of how I would approach the hair, but it was surprisingly simple. I just added a UV sphere and deleted the lower half. I also deleted the right half of the model so that I could add a mirror modifier to it. I then extruded these edges near her forehead to create the bangs. It's crazy how simple this was. Since I decided that this character is going to have a ponytail, I don't really need to model the hair flowing down her back. I just kept the back of her hair as a simple rounded shape. And I also added a solidify modifier to give the hair some thickness. Speaking of ponytails, I added a biz bezier, 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 bezier curve to create her ponytail. In the curve properties, under geometry, under bevel, I increased the depth property to give thickness to my ponytail, and then I adjusted the shape of the curve in edit mode. 
I reduced the resolution of the bevel and the curve resolution at the top as well to make it look low poly. After I was happy with the ponytail, I converted the Bezier curve, Bezier, Bezier, oh god, I can't say this, Be Bezier curve, Bezier curve into a mesh object. Now the only thing left to model were her armor plates and her hat. For the armor, I started by adding a cube and shaping it for the breastplate. I added two loop cuts horizontally and one loop cut vertically, and then shaped it according to my reference. It doesn't get any simpler than this. I then duplicated the chest plate and adjusted the shapes for the other parts of the armor as well. This might not be the most accurate representation of the samurai armor, but I think it looks cool and maybe I'll come back to it in the future again. So far, this is what my character looked like after modeling the armor plates. Now I just needed the hat and that was pretty simple too. It's just a simple cone shape that I created from a circle object. Before moving on to texturing, I changed the parenting of the objects to create a hierarchy, but this was completely unnecessary because it would later be undone during the rigging process. Oh, and I also created a simple ear object that's just another cylinder, and I gave her some rectangular earrings like you see here. I know I said the hat was the final thing, but what is a samurai without her katana, right? So I modeled her katana as well. <laughs> The katana. <laughs> the katana is very simple, it's just another cue for the handle, a cylinder for the guard, and another cue for the blade with a slight curve to it. The katana sheath is also just another cube that I duplicated from the blade. And that's the modeling part completed. With this, I now have a great base model that I can start painting the textures onto, which will be the topic of my next video. But hey! Maybe you have the attention span of a goldfish and want something a bit faster paced. So for you, I got this video where I go over <laughs> So for you, I got this video where I go over my entire low poly character creation process from start to finish. See you there. Bye bye.